In version 7, there have been some enhancements made to the browser, so we're going to take a really quick look at those. Now, first and foremost, I'm sure many of you already know that we can detach the browser here. So we have this upward facing arrow. We can just click once on that, and then we can resize. Coming down to the corner, I can pull this out as I'd like, and we can also move this over to a separate monitor if you would like to do so. But for the remainder of the tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and reattach that to the default view. Next in line, we have splice integration into the browser, and there are many videos already done on this, so I won't be covering this here. I'd actually like to remove this, but I haven't been able to find out how to do so. I was able to remove TuneCore by uninstalling the extension, but I can't find anywhere to do this. So if anyone knows, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Now moving on to the loops tab, let's go ahead and expand out our drums folder. We'll come to the loop section here. Now if we hover at the border and expand this out, we now have waveform and additional information here. So we can see our waveform for the loop, the tempo data, the length, whether it's stereo or mono, mono, the bit rate and the bit depth or the sample rate and bit depth. Now, if we click on this button here and by default, this will be engaged, we can switch to a larger view. We'll see our names a bit larger and then we can see some metadata below there as well. The details to the right are gonna show whether we have this turned on or off. Let's go ahead and pull that back to the right. And now, Within the information pane down below, when we have a file selected, I'll go ahead and double click on that to start playback. We can now see a waveform, and this kind of updates as it's playing back. So we can actually see where the audio information is. Previously, there would be some loops where we'd have audio information towards the middle or end, and the first part would be silent. And in previous versions, we just had a single bar going across the bottom. So we didn't really have an idea where that audio information was. But now we have this cool waveform. Now, if we have the search feature active by clicking on the magnifying glass, I can then type in a search here. And actually what I'd like to do, we'll go ahead and clear that out. Let's click on the tag button here. So this has been improved and now works in a more dynamic way. So once we make a selection here, so if I were to select rock, just take notice that the instrument and character tags are going to update dynamically. Okay, so that was a bit of a fail. We'll choose something different here. And actually what we'll do is come all the way up to the top for loops to search all of our loops and this will work a little bit better. So now when I select rock, we still get the same effect, but we will make this work. So you can see that these are updating here, the style and character to reflect whatever we tag that we choose. Whereas before, when we selected these tags, they all remained and they didn't update to reflect the selection that we had made. And also if you notice here that we have an icon that represents the provider of this sample library. So depending on the manufacturer, you're gonna see a different identifying icon here on the left-hand side. And the final thing that's been added is that there is going to be better alphanumeric sorting within your results when you are performing a search in the browser, in the loop section. And just keep in mind that for the files tab, these, this is still going to be the same here. We don't have that extended view button here at the top or the other additional information to the right. I'm not sure if they're going to be adding that in the future or not, but just be aware that uh, these new features for the sorting and the additional information that's shown is going to be specific to the loop section. However, when we're on the files tab, if I double click here, we can also see a waveform for our own personal libraries down below in the information panel. Okay, so that's been a quick look at the new features in the browser. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one training and would like to speed up your learning curve with Studio One, or if you're having any issues understanding how to use different features and concepts within Studio One, I do provide one-on-one -on -one training over Zoom, so 
If you'd like more information, check out the description area of this video or the pinned comment below. Otherwise, hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.